You're listening to The Wealth Advocate with finance experts John Mickelson and Patrick Jenkins. The Wealth Advocates simplify the financial world and show you how today's events could affect your financial health so you feel confident about your financial future. Welcome, everyone. We're excited to present another uh, uh, podcast from Wealth Advocates. And I have with me today Scott Grover, one of our partners. And we are going to be discussing a few fundamentals of improving your investment strategy and your investment experience. So, Scott, what are the fundamentals that you've seen as you've been watching over the last year or two? You know, um, there's quite a few, but I think if we narrowed it down, uh, there's five that stick out. And that's what I want to focus on today are those five different fundamentals. There's a lot of noise out there. Um, there's always the hot stock. There's headlines. So what, what we want to do today is just narrow it down to what works, what's proven. And uh, one of the first ones that come to mind is obviously time. Time is one of those assets that uh, when it comes to investing will help you weather lots of storms in the market. Um, now there's a, a you know you've you've been in the industry long enough where you've seen several bear markets. I've seen a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say has been uh, a key factor in people weathering those storms and seeing the most success after those? Storms? Well, what we see is historical returns actually look really good, but investor returns are always below. Always. Now, the only ex explanation for that is behavior. It's the behavior almost every time. And a good example of this is my dad was a builder, developer, and you know all about that. Um, he, uh, he always said, land never goes down in value. And I said, that's simply not true. And we all know that. In fact, we've got a great example if we go back to 2008. Now, no one, a lot of people said, oh, yeah, but it was, it was fine. We worked through it. And, and a big part of that is because no one could see the swing. I mean, they would say, well, I'm not going to sell in this environment as long as they were in a financially stable position. And so what they're really saying is they only saw the beginning point and the ending point. Now, if you did the same thing with whatever asset class, it can be stocks, it could be anything, gold, anything. If you look at the beginning point and the ending point, if you give it enough time, it always rose. And so that's one of the hard things is human behavior when it comes to something that's priced daily, like a stock is very different than the human behavior in something that is priced only at the beginning and the end. So that's a good example of what I mean by, you know, the planting of the tree in this example. Yeah. Returns are there. It's just a question of can you handle it when things get tough? Yeah. And this is exactly why when we sit down with a client and do some planning, we have, uh, we call it the bucket strategy. Uh, we have three different buckets that we're looking at. We have your now money, and that's money that we're going to invest differently than uh, money that's long term. That's your checking your savings. We have your soon money and that's going to be money that you may be using to purchase a car or a home in the next five, ten years or so. And then there's your later money. And I've noticed that when we break it down in that way, it makes a lot of sense and helps us understand, okay, what's our timeline on here? How aggressive can we be? And on that later money, I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make, and maybe you agree with me on this, is sometimes they go way too conservative on that and they uh, don't have that compounding return working with them for them as, as efficiently as they should. Yeah, no, I think that's very true. The other thing on that is it's important to start with defense first. So in that uh, strategy, whether you look at, look at the bucket now, sooner or later, you have to start with what is coming up and what do I need in the near future that cannot be subject to volatility. Volatility is a natural stage of the market. It is a natural course. There's nothing actually wrong with it. In fact, it's a benefit to us if we use it correctly. But we have to start with what do I need to have? So if we have a year like last year where the S&P was down 20%, NASDAQ was down around 32, what if I need that money at that point? That's where your, your middle bucket, you know, a, a non-retirement brokerage account is really important in saying I've got a layer of very stable money that if everything's dead bad, I know I can rely on it. Yeah, I love that strategy. It provides layers of protection. That's that's perfect. Um, you know, going on to the next habit that I, or next uh, fundamental would be uh, doing reoccurring contributions into your investment accounts. Um, again, this is one of those that uh, I feel like is a is a fundamental that gets overlooked. 
because a common mistake that many people try to make is you know timing the market mm -hmm. i'll pull out when it's bad get back in when it's good and what have mm -hmm. what have you seen with those types of what i've seen is investors? some people will do pretty well on i'm going to get out before it gets bad i've seen that but usually getting back in they never get in at the right Where's the bottom? Rarely do you ever get in at the right time. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult. The most important thing is look at the fundamentals and hold good quality companies. Yeah. And, and, and again, systematically, people forget how important that systematic approach is. Dollar cost averaging. We've all heard that. But the, the principle behind it is when things get bad, that's when I'm making the money. And it doesn't feel that way, but it is. Yeah, fact, so, if you're able to turn up your contribution amount during the, the rough times, you know, the, you'll see the benefit from that a year or two down the road. And, uh, you know, the people that waited and maybe they did get to the very bottom, which I have never seen that. I don't know if you have. Yeah, they always no. miss the bottom. Yeah. Um, but you're guaranteeing that you're going to get a benefit from that upswing in the market. And that's not to say that you don't make adjustments and changes. Certainly you do. I mean, that's part of this discussion is... You know, there are times when the, the years of set it and forget it are past. They're gone. I mean, they, they, people yeah. should not. And you see, I still see it all the time. People have their retirement account and they set up an allocation five, six years ago. And it's still exactly the same. And that's f fine in some instances, but most right now, there are reasons not to be in certain industries and not to be in certain areas. Yeah. And so that idea of, of you know, making a, a strategic adjustment is smart. But the biggest thing is be consistent, be yeah. steady in your savings and in your investing. And, you know, knowing what you're going to do when certain market scenarios happen, I feel is a very important part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know when the market's going to go down. We don't know when it's going to pop back up. We have an idea sometimes, but we know exactly what we're going to do when we see that market go down. And we know exactly what we're going to do when we see it go back up. Yeah. Case in point, recession is coming. How long have we heard that discussion? And now, now we're saying, oh, it's not, it's, it's, it's actually going to be a soft landing. Well, you know what? That might be wrong too. Yeah. The point is the anticipation of those things is not that easy to read, even for, you know, the experts of the field. Yeah. And I think that's a good lead into the next uh, topic yeah. that I want to talk about, which was understanding your risk, understanding what type of an investor you are. Um, you've heard this analogy before, but we've done presentations where, uh, I'll hold up a white piece of paper and I'll say, what color is this paper? And they'll say white. And they'll say, what do cows drink? And they'll say milk. And it takes them a second and I'm like, oh. And you know, <laughs> that's a very uh, good analogy, a good, a good uh, example of how the brain can work. We all know that uh, cows have to drink water, of course. Mm -hmm. And any anyway, babies drink milk. But, uh, what we our brains tell us and what our actions do are often different than what we really want. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what are some ways that we can help bridge that gap? You feel? Well, a, a biggest, the biggest part of this to me is one of my biggest roles is to replace speculation and fear with st statistics and probability. And that sounds simple, but it's not. And so when the markets are shifting and changing, we have to be looking at what are the chances of of significant change and how do we adjust to it. So we don't want to adjust all the time, but we do want to make sure that we shift in the momentum of the market to a degree. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, everybody has a different financial fingerprint. And what I think is risk and what my client thinks is risk may be a world apart. And so part of it is, is going through some of the discussion and the tools that we have to say, you know, here's the kind of, of up and down, the volatility that you would see to get an outcome that you want. And even though I know long-term, the more aggressive approach I take, the more I'm gonna be able to, to get a return for, that doesn't always feel good when you're in the bottom of it. And some people just, yeah. you just cannot stomach those kinds of downturns, even though logically, we know it will, will rise and be better. And yeah. so, so the biggest thing is trying to anticipate, or not anticipate, but try to identify you know, what each person's comfort comfort zone is. Yeah. And that even in those three buckets, I mean, you know, now is just money at the bank. It's lazy, it's taxable, doesn't do much, but I need it. I need to know I've got money in my pocket. That middle bucket, a layer of safety, and then what, you know, how much risk do I take there? And then maybe increase as I have, you know, comfort in the long term. Yeah. And I mean, how many meetings have we been in where 
the client comes and tells us that they're a certain type of risk taker. Yeah. We go through the tools and then they're like, oh. Okay. And and in yeah. up markets, everybody feels more confident and they become more aggressive. In yeah. the down markets, they become more they defensive. Already, yeah. That is contrary to what you should do. It's yeah. what human nature tells us and it's what you should not do. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the challenges is overcoming, you know, the human nature side of things with more probability and logic. Yeah. I think that's those are that's a very valid point. Um, and this that leads right into the next one. So um, getting your mindset right when you are investing and understanding your your uh, timeline, understanding the purpose of the different accounts. Um, one of my favorite talking points on understanding your uh, inv invest investment objectives is avoiding media exposure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's a whole huge topic right now. Everyone has their own take on it. But uh, one thing to understand with the media is that they have an agenda too. And what do they want? They want your attention. And how do they get it? Disturb you. <laughs> they want you to feel all the emotions. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're wrong. I'm not saying that they're not right. But uh, those emotions, the fear, the greed, they can get in the way of making sound judgmental decisions. And that's where, you know, having someone like us to help be a sounding board, if you need someone to talk yeah. to, to say, hey, is this a good idea? We can go through and, and make sure that, you know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but you're not making any flippant decisions. And I also think it's, it's important to distinguish information from media, meaning core information is actually really helpful, very useful. Um, and, it, and information, and it comes from media. Some of it, some of it does. And especially when we talk about emotional trends, emotional movement, you know, we become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we think things are bad, yeah. they get bad. We stop spending. If we think things are getting better, they do get better. And so there's a lot of human emotion. And that's why, you know, the argument right now, AI has not adjusted for those factors. Yeah. They can't, they can't predict the next scandal, you know? So you can't, you can't fully adhere to that and we want to use those tools now the the point is core data and even in the ai world that is really helpful i mean it's it's almost like when i you know a certain amount of sun is really good for you too much sun causes cancer <laughs> yeah so we want the right amount of data and the right type of data the core data a lot of times we see you know people swing in emotion and then the core data comes out and then it equilibrates back to where it's supposed to be, yeah. either up or down. You know, I think a good example of that is, um, and this, I, you know, Bitcoin has uh, been kind of the leader of this, Bitcoin and Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, there's always that hot stock and you hear about people that owned it or they owned it and then they sold it and it took off. And all of a sudden everyone jumps on board. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the rule of thumb and I've, something we go by is, if you've heard about it, it's probably too late to get back on. on yeah. Board. So you've missed that trend. However, you know there are there are some things that we can track, some data that you know we can give you some exposure to a broad number of stocks that have the potential to do that. And you know that that's a sound way to do it. But jumping from stock to stock right after it takes off, it's not a proven track record. And uh, I really like the 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 uh, the saying on the slide that says patience has a proven track record. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well. Everyone's bragging about their big gains. Just remember, no one brags about what they lose. Yeah. No one brags about their losses, but we all have them. Mm -hmm. And uh, sticking to the patients, to the fundamentals, that's what's going to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. The statistically, it's it's hitting more often than you're missing. And, and, and yeah. you will have both. You will yeah. hit and you will miss. The question is, can we consistently outperform on the, on the plus side? That yeah. brings wealth over time. Yeah. So, you know, and as, as we discuss this, you can see there's a lot of traps with investing. And that's where uh, John and I and Patrick, we are very um, uh, aware of those traps. And we want to make sure that we help you avoid those so that you don't have to worry about them. And um, it's very important to seek the help of a qualified and professional, especially now where things are shifting and changing so much. Um, by the day even uh, it's one of those things that it's it really is a full-time job just to stay on top of what's going on in the markets yeah and, and with the shifts and changes the other thing i'd point out is and and this is a little bit of me personally but i i am a tennis player i've grown up playing all my life my dad played with me every day in high school and it's interesting to watch that that evolve over time and the reason why i say that is because 
years and years ago, no one had a coach. All these pro players, nobody had a coach. Hmm. Now, it's rare to not see a team of people in the box, a trainer, a, you know, a strate strategic coach. And there's always a four or five now. And has in performance improved? Yes, it has. And I don't think it's very different in a lot of other areas. Sometimes you need that outside perspective to see what you're doing wrong. You can't see it in yourself all the time. So that's kind of the role we play is to try to say, you know, you're busy doing other things. We should be minding the store and saying, where are the blind spots? And how do we co coordinate that with your estate plan, your income plan, your financial plan, tax plan, making sure those pieces fit together? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so let me ask you this. When you're, you have a, a, a player that you're coaching and they're in a big match and they have a big, you know, they're, they're lagging way behind mm -hmm. and they're, you can just see it, you know, you see the body language that they're struggling. What's some of the advice that you give to them? And, you know, yeah. I, I know they've seen success with this because they've come back and won. Yeah. Well, I, I think the, the, the starting point is, you know, especially, and this is whether we look at a client or not, you have to start with what are the talents that this kid or this person has. You've got to start with what they've got. So the advice I give to, to one person can't be the same as to everyone else because they have a different skill set. They have different tools to use. So the other thing is looking at, you know, the competitive nature, you know, who, who am I playing against? And then the other thing is take the pressure off. <laughs> and that, that's kind of true in investing too. Yeah. Is, you know, people come in filled with anxiety. There's always opportunity. Can I shift their attention from fear to where are the, the opportunities that exist in this maybe a terrible environment or a good environment? Yeah. Um, you mentioned that, you know, a lot of professional tennis players, they have several coaches now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's another great um, segue to how we operate our firm. Um, not only do you have one coach here at Wealth Advocates, you actually have several sets of eyes on your accounts at all times because you're going to see stuff that's different than I'm going to see. Brad's yeah. going to see things that are different than I'm going to see. We all have a different way of looking at things. And by having those different sets of eyes on the accounts, you're going to have great coaching behind you. You're going to have great advice and you're going to have access to a lot of help whenever you need it. Yeah. So as far as, you know, we talk about coaches, advisors. What are the qualities that you feel are most important in an advisor? Yeah, I mean, if you look at what I discuss with almost every, well, I try to discuss with almost every client, is whether it's me, I mean, you expand that team, your accountant, attorney, whoever it is that you gain advice from, three things matter. One is honesty, and I'm not talking about someone that lies. I'm talking about someone that says, here's all the good things, but don't pay attention to the bad. You want to have the opposite. Here are all the bad things about what this decision is, and here's why people do it anyway. Complete information to make sound decisions. Second thing would be, are they truly good at what they do? There's some really great, honest, nice people that really just are not that good. And so, and that's through good times and bad. Yeah. You see the flash in the pan where they do really great, and then it's all lost again, and it's like a revolving door. You don't want that. You want someone that is vested in your success. The last one, access. I don't care how talented they are or how honest they are. If you can't get them when you need them, no good to you. And that's why this team approach is really important. If I happen to be on a phone call and someone calls with an emergency, there needs to be a system in place. That's not just me. That's everybody. The people can get what they need when they need it, when it's critical. Yeah. I think that that's, those are, are uh, great qualities. And I am grateful to work with other advisors that share those same uh, uh attention to those those qualities so yeah um you know with with that uh we just want to let you know that we have things set up to show that we do value our clients we i truly do care about everyone's situation and um you know everyone's different like you said so we're not going to copy and paste this person's situation over to another person's situation um, everyone's got different things going on in their lives and so uh, one of the things that we try to do is as things change in a client's life, we try to adjust their plan. Their, you know, retirement's a moving target. Uh, investment goals is a moving target. So, you know, we try to meet as frequently as possible to make sure that we're adjusting as time goes on. Um, anything you want to add to that, John? No, just in closing, I just say, you know, fundamentals are fundamentals. And yeah. even what, back to the, the analogy of, of sports, you know, everyone knows that sometimes the most basic things are the things that, that make the biggest difference. I remember one, and this is way back to the 70s, 
guy was struggling with with a tennis match and this is again sorry this is my my thing i know <laughs> um and his coach came out and said watch the ball that's all he said and all of a sudden everything turned so sometimes the most basic things can turn the big ship and so in conclusion remember that that we, we care about the direction it takes and we are vested in your success. Most importantly, we want to make sure we do the right things at the right time. So thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you taking time to watch. Thank you for listening to The Wealth Advocates. Join us every month by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. You can also look for The Wealth Advocates on Stitcher and YouTube. Want more information about today's topics? Reach out to John or Patrick directly by calling or texting the Wealth Advocates Office at 435-754-7888. Learn more about the Wealth Advocates and how they can help you by visiting www.wealth-advocates.com. Securities offered through Registered Representatives of Cambridge Investment Research Incorporated, a broker-dealer member, FINRA, SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. Wealth Advocates and Cambridge Investment Research Incorporated are not affiliated.